avoiding prop strikes. And you'll want to avoid these. For starters, they're expensive and require a full engine teardown and often an engine overhaul. Propeller tips approach the speed of sound, and the centrifugal forces, or centripetal acceleration, amount to 10 to 20 tons per blade. That coming in contact with anything will hurt, especially if it's you. So, always treat the propeller as if the magnetos are hot. Depending on the aircraft you fly and your prop's length, your ground clearance can vary dramatically. So be vigilant for dips and debris on taxi, takeoff, and landing. Pilots flying aircraft with especially low clearance, like a Mooney, have to be extra vigilant on taxi. And on landing, have to be careful not to release too much back pressure too quickly. If you keep your nose wheel from banging into the ground in front of you, or your tail wheel from bouncing around behind you, you'll be doing yourself, your propeller, your engine, and your firewall a favor. Landings are when pilots get into trouble the most. Let's learn from some of their mistakes in this Air Safety Institute classic. Takeoffs and landings, the ups and downs of the GA pilot. Now, I want to show you some examples of landings our cameras captured at a recent fly-in. The conditions that day required normal piloting technique, but some of the landings you'll see are anything but normal. No one can accuse this pilot of being too hot on final. Oh, 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 kaboom! Okay, he's gonna try it again. There, that's better. The first landing would have been great on an aircraft carrier, but here on land, I've got to give that a 3.9. This 182 appears set up nicely, but wait, the pilot lets the nose drop. Ouch! We hope he didn't do that on purpose, but he's sure giving his oleo strata workout. And the local A&P might get some work out of this too. Can you say potential prop strike? That's a 2.0 arrival in my book. Here it is from the reverse angle. Look how nicely the plane's set up and how quickly it all goes south. Ouch! That's what happens when you don't maintain the proper landing attitude. Bouncy landings are often the result of trying to touch down with too much speed. Porpoising can begin after a bounce, where the pilot who expected to touch down and stay down now finds themselves back in the air and with the nose high. The natural inclination is to push the nose down, but if you push the nose down too much, it can lead to the nose wheel hitting the runway before the main gear and starting the bounce and attempted recovery process again. At this point, the pilot can get even further behind the corrections, and the oscillations can continue until the prop hits first, before the nose wheel. And it doesn't take much for a nose low attitude to result in a prop strike. Sometimes just a few bounces will do it. If you find yourself in the beginning of a port pit, the best choice is to smoothly adjust your angle attack while adding power, go around, and try again. This go around will feel different than the go around we typically practice. It'll probably be very close to the ground, the stall horn might be going off, might have a higher than normal angle of attack and a much lower airspeed than you normally begin to go around with. Remember the benefits of ground effect as you transition back from the runway into the air to help stabilize your go around. While you're in the pattern, determine why the porpoise began. Were you too high above the runway or too fast? Correct for it on your next attempt. If you do have a prop strike, do not attempt to go around. Cut the power and stay on the ground. When you're ready to shut down, conduct a P lead check. If it's not on your checklist, that get to the habit of doing it at the end of every flight. If you don't know how, check your manufacturer's recommendation. When exiting the aircraft, perhaps to refuel or talk to somebody, make sure the keys are out and on the dash in plain view for everyone's awareness. And that's what this comes down to, awareness. Be aware of your surroundings, be on guard during ground operations, land on speed, and don't accept a sloppy touchdown.